again, and welcome to the Cancer Survivor Show, brought to you by the Chemo Girls. Woo. <laughs> Once again, we're coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee, at the National Women's Survivor Conference, where we are having the absolute honor of interviewing Mr. Scott Hamilton. He, of course, takes no real introduction right. because I know you guys know exactly who he <laughs> is. He has delighted us on the ice. He's an Olympic gold medalist, and he is also a cancer survivor. Thank you so much oh, and welcome. My pleasure. Thanks for what you're doing. It's, it's great. Yeah, it's it's been wonderful here at the convention. So much support and such. Well, just having everybody celebrate life. That's Most right. everyone here. Um, are survivors or are there people going through treatment right now? And it is tr a true uh, celebration and victory for life. Well, you know, if you ask the National Coalition for Cancer Survivors, they'll tell you that every day you live with cancer, you're a survivor. That's so right. every yes. person here, um, whether they've been through and they're finished their treatments or they're just beginning their treatments, yes. they, they qualify yes. under the rules of the game that you're a survivor. Yeah, that's right. Um, one of the things that I would like to ask you is, you know, you obviously were a public figure before your diagnosis, and people were so familiar with you. Um, how, how did that impact walking into your cancer story and walking through your cancer story? I, you know, it, I, over a long period of time, I developed uh, a relationship mm -hmm. with um, a growing audience that was Stars on Ice. And, we, we would go to 60 cities a year and, and we would bring in a lot of people. And, you know, when you kind of do the math of, of, of how many people were there and how many people knew we were there and how many people would like to have come but just didn't, there's, that's a pretty big group sure. of people in each town. And, and so I understood that, you know, over all those years that I've been doing everything I could to build um, this show, build an audience, build interest in figure skating, build interest in male figure skating. Um, you know, I, I did a lot just to kind of just build some, you know, gravity and some, so knowing that I was being diagnosed um, with something as big as cancer, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's, I lost my mother to cancer. I, I, mm -hmm. I respected kind of what the disease could do, not in a good way respected, right. you know, but in a way that um, I had to really take care of things all at once, but also knowing that, that it would be, um, it would come as a shock to a lot of people because I, I was 50 cities into a 60 city tour wow. and I was Goodness. hurting a lot. I mean, I've learned over the years that I can, um, I have a pretty Play high tolerance pain. to pain. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Um, so I mean, it's, you it's, have a couple of bumps keeps, and bruises yeah, along the, the way. way. Yeah, scars in there. But um, so we were pretty um, calculating in how we rolled the information out and how we managed the information. I, I never wanted it to be, and it's very tempting when you're in the, public eye to sort of, um, you know, um, make what you're going through a part of your daily, you know, persona. Mm. And I certainly didn't want that to be the case. And so yes. I really shut it down. I went away and every little bit, if I had an update, I would, I would, you know, my publicist would put out a little bit of a mm -hmm. blurb here and there. And, and I just really just wanted to be quiet in my recovery and in my treatment of the yeah. cancer and my chemotherapy. And, and so I just pretty much just, you know, bolted down the windows yeah. and locked all the doors and just thought, I really only want to share good stuff mm -hmm. with people. And, and where I was around round three of, of chemo um, really wasn't that great. So mm -hmm. it was better the way that we did it. I, I controlled all information. I, I didn't, you know, um, try to, you know, make my disease and a, a press opportunity, even though I was getting a lot of pressure to do that. I, bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can imagine. So, um, no, I, um, so, you know, I want to get through it and then get back to life. So I really treated it kind of emotionally and professionally as a bump in the road yeah. more than a life changing experience. Right. It, it could be life changing for me, but I didn't want it publicly to be anything more than a bump in the road. Yeah. Yeah. So, and since your, uh, rec your, uh, success and survivorship, you've become very active with um, different programs in terms of mentoring, yeah. and assistance. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit? Well, Can you tell our audience 
what they need to know, what you're, what you are involved with that they need to know sure. about today? Yeah. Um, one of the things I realized going through my cancer was there was a real lack of information, like yeah. user friendly information. And there was a real lack of a true understanding for me to know what I'm about to endure. Right. And um, I asked all the questions. I went on the internet and I, I found all these medical websites and would have 12 syllable words in them yeah. and would be like all written basically journal. for like, yeah, third year medical student mm -hmm. or uh, resident or something. And I just thought, you know, either I'm really sick or I'm really not smart. And I really realized um, that I'm really not smart. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable <laughs> with that. So I realized that there's a lot of people out there that don't read journal, medical mm -hmm. journals. Yeah. <laughs> and so that we probably needed to come up with something a little bit more user friendly. Mm -hmm. So we built a website called chemocare.com. It gets um, about a million hits or more a month. Yeah. And it's everything you need to know about chemotherapy, um, how it's administered, uh, the drugs. It's really cool what they do with the drugs. There's, there's you know, I don't know how. I don't know. I, I've been to the website many times. And I like having being able to click on a specific drug. drug and it tells you and what it, it you does. Know, and but it does it in friendly language. It does. You know, we, it does. You it did up, an excellent job with that. And we've translated to Spanish. And, and there's also yes. a whole part of it that um, helps you um, you know, just sort of uh, deal with the side effects. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the chemotherapy experience. Mm -hmm. We ripped the ugly, nasty hood off of it and yeah. we said, here it is, chemical right. therapy. And I, I always ask somebody when they're going through chemo and they're feeling rough, I go, I go, you know what the biggest effect of chemotherapy is? And they always go right to hair loss or nausea. nausea. <laughs> I go, no, the biggest effect of it is it kills cancer. <laughs> yeah. You know, so keep your <laughs> eye on the prize and just keep moving forward. There you and go. The rest of it is you can manage those. You, can, sure you can, can deal with that. It's The big thing is, is it's killing the cancer that's in your body. And hopefully through the research we're doing as part of this, um, my organization is called CARES, Cancer Alliance for Research, Education, Survivorship. And part of the, the CARES is, you know, research. And I'd love it someday if, you know, and I'm even hearing of research where a doctor has found that if you give a massive amount of a chemotherapy drug to a certain cancer, mm -hmm. it kills it. If you give a lesser amount, it changes that cell into a healthy cell. Wow. Really? So, yeah. Okay. So there's that kind of research going yeah. on right now. That, so that would have been good to know. Chemo, no, I'm just saying <laughs> no, that there's certain forms of cancer, yeah. are, all of a sudden it's really getting better. Yeah. And and research needs to keep going yeah. because it'd be great if, if it's like, oh, you have stage four breast cancer. Here's a pill. Yeah. Take mm -hmm. one of these um, for the next four days and you should be fine. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. How amazing. No, but that that's is. where research can take yeah. us, you know, mm -hmm. with the, the genome and everything else. So yeah. the R and the CARES is research. The E, the education part um, mm -hmm. is chemocare.com. Yeah. We're going to be launching another couple websites that all are about the cancer uh, treatment experience. And then the S is survivorship. And that's yeah. empowering survivors to be more involved in uh, as a community as, as helping the next patient. You know, when I went through chemotherapy, I asked the doctor how sick I was going to be. And he said, moderate to severe. And I go, what does that mean? What does that goes, mean? I have no idea. <laughs> what does it all mean? <laughs> it's, just, it's just, they have to tell you something. And That's they really, right. They've never been there and done yeah, that, right? Yeah. And then, I, and then you know, just surgical stuff and post-swelling and all those things. It'd be nice to know, you know but yeah. nobody really arms you with that, yeah. you know? And, and that's being armed. So um, we created a network called the Fourth Angel Mentoring Program. Uh -huh. And the Fourth Angel, basically the concept is the first angel is your oncologist. Mm -hmm. The second angel is your oncology nurse. nurse. The She's third angel is your friends and family. Mm -hmm. And there what? Uh, there it is. Fourth angel is someone who's been there, done that. That yes. can that, that can be the person that you call when you're really don't understand what's going Beautiful. on. Mm -hmm. Your doctor Beautiful. can't give you that information because they've never been there. Yeah. They've right. never done that. But someone, a survivor, can talk to a patient mm -hmm. in a way that no one else can, yes. and really be a role model for them, so right. that that when they are at their you know their lowest they can go and then that mentor can say you know what i've been right where you are and yeah. it, it doesn't last that long yeah you and know? they can be real they yeah. can be real with what's happening yeah with them. you can't look at your mentor and say you don't understand <laughs> i do yeah I mean, i've been exactly where you are so fourth angel mentoring program is starting to like it's exponentially like just that's beautiful going like this because yeah. everybody that gets mentored sees the value in it 
Yeah. And not everybody that one. survives cancer knows what they want to do with their yeah. survivorship. You That's know? right. You can't, you know, all of a sudden be writing hundred thousand dollar checks to fund research. Yeah. You know, you can't be doing all, but you can be involved. You know, and a lot of people can walk. You know, on some of the mm -hmm. walks, a lot of people. There's always something there for a survivor yeah. to do. But to have that personal, one-on-one -on -one experience of knowing that within the cancer community, you just help yeah. somebody out. And that's part of why we're doing this podcast show is the women that we work uh, with and present our support systems to uh, via uh, gifts from other people. Mm -hmm. You know, we sit and talk to them for a few hours sometimes. And when we leave, they say, I wish we could just hear your voice every yeah. day. Yeah. It's like, like I this, this voice you want to hear every day. I can day. set you up with a fourth angel mentoring <laughs> staff, and they'll okay. give you the training, so we, and they'll find you somebody to help you. I can help you with that. We can we work together. I think we have some yeah. wonderful uh, resources that we can and, and, just work together to help and we're all in this mad, together. massive number and, of and people. And there's, you know, there's other mentoring programs out there, and you know, it's not like we're having some sort of turf battle. It's yeah. like... No, Fantastic. Work together. Work together. Yeah. Now, here's what works for us. What works for you? And you know, we can collaborate. I don't. I don't care if there's 50 fourth angel that's mentoring right. programs out there, and they're all yeah. run by different people. I love it because that's right. That's something I didn't have that I really could have used. You can only touch so many people, mm -hmm. you know, and so it takes a large amount of people to touch the people that are affected by cancer yeah. today. So, in our in the S and our cares. Um, you know, for more information, people can go on scottcares.org and mm -hmm. they can kind of, they can go to chemocare.com, they can go to Fourth Angel Mentoring Program and they can see, you know, more information about our fundraise that we do every first Saturday in November. The way I see it, the, with what we've built so far, this can be a patient advocate entity in every cancer center in the country. Mm -hmm. And to put, to be able to build um, a marketing plan together to create more, mm -hmm. um, more opportunities to fund research yes. because that's what yes. I'm all about. I lost my mother to cancer and I, I thought that it would be amazing as in my lifetime if I could find the cure mm -hmm. for what she went through. Yeah. And, and honestly, her type of cancer, it's, it's moved a couple ticks, mm -hmm. but that was, you know, that was 77. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so it hasn't gone as far as it could have, would have, should have. We like to say we're supporting you while we wait for that cure. We right, want one day not to want. have a business and yeah. su and support yeah, systems, so you know, for it to be nice. done away with. It's kind yeah. of fun that, you know, I work a lot with the Tossie Cancer Center at the Cleveland Clinic, and it's like, isn't it funny that you guys embrace me and all I want to do is put you out of business? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and like, we just want to put ourselves out of business. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's everybody awesome. in the cancer world just doesn't want to be in that world. You that's know? right. And, and so I do think that, you know, once they, they solve a few more things, especially with, um, you know, genetic, you know, the research that's being done there, it was always in the past for research that the money would drive the science. Mm -hmm. Now with the genome, the science is way right. over there, and we got to find a way to bring the money up to the science. Right. And so there's, it's not going to be like we're trying to make things up as we go along. There's always going to be a young researcher out there, a young investigator that hasn't been funded, and they can't get their funding until they've been funded. Right. Yeah. I understand. Only a, only a government could think of something like that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we're, I'm trying to be a gap filler. I'm trying to be, yeah. you know, drive more of a human experience, get more information out there to people so they don't fear something. Yeah. They can just sort of, you know, again, look at it, we pulled the ugly, dirty mask off chemotherapy, as you are, you're doing, and um, we can get to work. That's right. right. So my last question for you is really on a more one-on-one -on -one basis. Mm -hmm. We work with a lot of women. So at, say you're speaking to a man who's just been diagnosed. What is the most simple advice that you would give him as he walks into his cancer story? Um, uh, it depends on how well I know them, but the first thing that comes to mind is this journey, every step of this journey is going to be exactly what you make it. Mm. And I think that speaks to all of us because when I went through all, you know, my chemotherapy for four months and then I went to a, a big surgery, I didn't want anybody in my, in my circle or in my, in my room or in my company that was going to be a lower lip. I didn't want yeah. any of this stuff. Yeah. I only wanted teeth in my room. 
understand. So, you know, there's a part of that where I, I took control of the situation. The nurses, the oncology nurses, treated me like an eight-year-old. They decorated my chemo bags and gave me, like, SpongeBob and Scooby-Doo <laughs> Band-Aids. It's unbelievable. <laughs> they treated me like a child. Yeah. And every day they bring my chemo bag in on the road, and they go, hey, it's party time. You know? <laughs> and um, it was You great. want to take some of this? <laughs> but it was cocktail. It was, it, was, it, was, it was meant to be light, happy, sure. friendly, joyous at mm-hmm. times. It was never, and I made it that way. I created the environment oh. where I wanted it to be a certain way. And I didn't want to be pitied. I didn't want anybody to be scared. I didn't want to have anybody in my, in my circle or in my company or my room that was going to just feel bad. Mm-hmm. Go, no, no, no. This is going to be, good. This is going to be what I make it. Yeah. So I would tell somebody, I go, this is going to be what you make it. That's good. You know, good so advice. Many ways. Mm-hmm. It is good very advice. good advice. And we thank you so much for giving us your knowledge and the uh, wisdom of your journey and your time and passion yeah. is passion there well, is, it like, is. You a, know, I, there's a true passion to to help other people there and i've always when i lost my mother i hated cancer and um i've always wanted to participate somehow in the community and then i became a survivor and yeah. it was like okay now i've got i got my street cred change now change just know? the picture well it does it didn't change my hate of cancer it just changed the fact that now i'm in the community as a participant mm-hmm. and i can really roll up my sleeves to kind of rally the troops to right. you know to really be able to engage a community to drive That's right. um you know everything we've got toward helping the next patient um getting out that still early detection is the best cure mm-hmm. for cancer and um, vigilance is really important. Women are much better than men at being vigilant with their physical health. Men, you know, they're bulletproof. Yeah, you know? it'll be all right. Yeah, but I haven't seen a doctor in 25 years. <laughs> That's <laughs> How <you> courage. Doing? <laughs> yeah, really, yeah, you, you better go. Um, so, you know, all I can do now is just um, really try to bring great people right. into you know, my CARES organization and, and just grow it. Mm-hmm. spread it out as much as I possibly can and, and just help everybody in the cancer community. That's excellent. Thank you so much oh, for being you. with us today. Oh, my mm-hmm. pleasure. Thanks. And um, we'll see you next time, guys. This is Lucy and Sharon, where we're not just surviving, but, but thriving with, with you. you. Bye. Bye.